In the fall of 1955, the body of 42-year-old Winifred Adams was found in her Indianapolis, Indiana apartment. Despite being beaten and strangled to death with a pair of nylon stockings, investigators determined it was possible Winifred had taken her own life. On the morning of Wednesday, October 26, 1955, 44-year-old Kenneth Adams returned to his Indianapolis, Indiana apartment after completing the evening shift at the Chrysler Corporation plant where he was employed as a millwright. Kenneth shared the one-bedroom, second-floor apartment located on North Park Avenue, with his wife of five months, 42-year-old Winifred Adams. When Kenneth approached the front door, he found it unlocked, and slightly ajar. Alarmed, he entered the apartment and called out for Winifred, but received no response. As he ventured into the couple's bedroom, Kenneth was met with a nightmarish scene. Winifred lay dead on the floor, a pair of stockings tightly wound around her neck. Kenneth immediately summoned police. Winifred was found lying face down on the bedroom floor. She wore a blue checkered dress and was barefoot. It was noted, however, that she was not wearing a bra. Winifred's glasses and a wristwatch she wore, were found near her body. A pair of nylon stockings were found wrapped and double knotted so tightly around her neck, police had to use fingernail clippers to remove them. An autopsy concluded that Winifred's ultimate cause of death had been asphyxiation, however she had also sustained several other injuries including a laceration above one eye, a bloody nose, several cuts on her lower lip, teeth marks, on her upper lip, and a bruised jaw, shoulder, and chest. The autopsy also determined that Winifred had, recently been sexually active, however did not specify if they believed she had been assaulted. Her time of death was placed between 11 and 12 p.m. the evening before. The couple's three-room apartment was found in almost perfect order. In the living room, the television was on and tuned to the local news station. Winifred's purse was found undisturbed in the bedroom and the bed was neatly made, however investigators did discover a small amount of fresh blood on the edge of the comforter. There were no signs of forced entry, and nothing appeared to be missing. Police were able to quickly develop a timeline indicating Winifred's last movements. On Tuesday morning, Winifred went to work at Beverage Paper Company where she was employed as a secretary. After her shift ended that evening, Winifred and a female co-worker were picked up by Kenneth. He dropped the female co-worker at a bus stop and the couple headed to get dinner at the Mandarin Inn. After eating, the pair headed back home to their apartment where Kenneth watched television for a bit while Winifred went to chat with a neighbor downstairs. Around 9.45 p.m., Kenneth left for work. Along the way, he stopped for a cup of coffee at a local truck stop. He arrived at the Chrysler plant at 11 p.m., half an hour earlier than his shift was set to begin. According to co-workers, Kenneth seemed like his usual self. At 7.30 a.m., his shift ended and he drove home, making the grim discovery around 8 a.m. Kenneth told investigators he and Winifred were happy, and he had no idea who would want to hurt her. Leona Hauser, a neighbor who lived directly below the Adams, told investigators that she was Winfred's closest friend. Leona said around 7 p.m., Winifred had come down to borrow a hair dryer. The two chatted for around 20 minutes before Winifred bid her good night and returned to her upstairs apartment. She confirmed she saw Kenneth leaving for work sometime just before 10 p.m. Though Leona could offer no possible suspects, she told detectives if a struggle had occurred upstairs, she would have heard it. Leona explained that the walls of the apartment were paper thin, and she had been home and awake until well after midnight. According to her, the only noise coming from the Adams apartment was the gentle hum of the television set. Detectives tested this theory by sending two policemen up to the Adams apartment while another stayed in Leona's apartment to listen for the sounds. According to the officer below, despite the upstairs officer's attempts to be quiet, he could hear every single footstep above. The sound traveled so well in fact, the officer below was able to tell when the Adams television set was on or off, despite being at a low volume. It was learned that Kenneth had been the fourth of four husbands Winifred had. Born in England, she married her first husband there, 
however the pair did not stay married for long. She then married her second husband, Edward Long, an American soldier and casket salesman who was stationed in England. Together the pair came to the United States, however just a few years later they too divorced. Winifred married her third husband, 34-year-old James Lindsay in 1950, however they divorced two and a half years later. A local said, when James heard the police wanted to speak with him, he immediately went to the station to clear his name. When questioned, James denied having knowledge of the murder, telling police he had spent that entire evening at a bar, hanging out with his girlfriend who worked as a waitress at the establishment. When asked why the pair had divorced, he told investigators her, constant nagging and obsessive cleaning, drove him out of the house. After several rounds of questioning, two polygraph tests, and confirmation of Kenneth's timeline and James' alibi, police confirmed they did not believe either was responsible for Winfred's death. Rumors of an ex-boyfriend named, Pat, were also investigated, however police failed to locate the man. Despite the obvious possibility of foul play, with no suspects or motive, police announced it was possible Winifred had taken her own life. After conducting that sound test, in the apartment, detectives were adamant that it wasn't possible a struggle had occurred, and as nothing appeared to be missing, robbery was out of the question. Unfortunately, after the announcement was made, Winifred's case was put on the back burner so to speak, before vanishing entirely from the headlines. Winifred was laid to rest at Oaklawn Memorial Gardens in nearby Fishers, Indiana. Sadly, what really happened to her will most likely forever remain a mystery.